Good morning, everyone. It's Michael Hubicki, the host of the Thriving Mayor Show. It's April 21st, 2021, and happy Earth Day tomorrow, everyone. We'll begin this episode with honoring the lands and the people from where I'm broadcasting. The Aboriginal land and the Indigenous peoples who've lived here from the beginning. As settlers, we're grateful for the opportunity to meet here, and we thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Long before today, there have been Aboriginal peoples who have been the stewards of this place. In particular, we honor the ancestors of the land, the Anishinaabek, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe, Chippewa peoples. This territory is covered by the Williams Treaty. Tatalia Michelle Nahani taught me about honoring our shared community with the land and people. I'd also like to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to all of the mayors and councillors, our city staff and people working in our cities and our frontline caregivers and workers who are helping keep us safe and, and shepherding us through this uh, pandemic. Today is a milestone on The Thriving Mayor Show. It's episode number 20 and is entitled Helping Mayors Thrive. It's a bit of a recap and we're going to hear some from some of our previous guests and also um, I'm going to give some of my unique perspectives on what I've heard and how I think I can help mayors thrive. Naturally, this episode is sponsored by thrivingmayor.com. Today's uh, episode is basically broken into four sections. The first is a little bit about me and why I want to help mayors thrive, why, why I think mayors are so important. We're going to meet uh, six of the mayors from previous episodes, and they're going to talk about, or they're actually going to demonstrate six of the leadership traits that I think are, are particularly important and, and essential for helping leaders be successful. We're going to talk about some of the key challenges leaders are facing, especially now during a pandemic. And lastly, uh, I'm gonna introduce two of my ideas on how I think I can help mayors thrive. I'm just going to switch over to um, the PowerPoint deck that I put together. So why me? In 2013, when I was embarking on a master's of coaching education degree at Ohio University, I was assigned a book report to do. And the book that I chose was called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And as I read through Carol Dweck's book, and it really started to sink home to me that most of my life I'd been living with a fixed mindset. The, the fixed mindset is uh, it's really challenging to deal with, if, if you know what I mean. It's, we, we, we tend to um, expect to be the best. We always want to win. If someone's better than us, we, we find excuses to, to stop uh, participating and things like that. Whereas a growth mindset, we, we embrace failure as part of a learning process. So it's not, it's not losing, but it's learning. And, and I had discovered that I'd been dealing with this um, um, uh, fixed mindset for all of my life. And, and it was such a refreshing uh, discovery to be able to, to learn that and then move into, into a growth mindset. And I take my hat off and applaud every single politician who puts their, or, or, or candidate who puts their name in the ring to run for uh, political office, because to me, that's the, the truest sign of a growth mindset. I also have an empathy for mayors and the daily pressures and demands that they face. And I got that through 30 years of, of working with them in municipalities uh, as a consultant, designing, planning, designing, and implementing public realm projects in cities and towns, mostly uh, throughout Ontario. I also have a, a really strong interest in stewardship and uh, ecology and creating sustainable projects, as well as social, socially equitable and energy efficient projects. Uh, some of the some of the past projects that I've worked on include a off-grid, uh, self-sufficient home, um, creating 
uh, turning downtown streets into into public parks, uh, things like that. Also to try to bring a brand new, fresh perspective to the mayor's role and, and a building process with personalized strategies. And this is where I'd love to bl blend my coaching experience and my po coaching education on how to uh, educate and teach other coaches uh, along with my professional uh, landscape architecture designation and to, to blend those two um, uh, gifts and skills skill sets that I have and to help expand other people's uh, and my and mayor's mindsets to help them master their mindsets. So why mayors matter to me? Mayors live, work and lead at the intersection of place and people. Places and people both have potential to be more, be better, be healthier, contribute more and function better in short to thrive. So mayors are the superheroes that we elect to improve the quality of living for over 80% of us who live in cities and towns. So, so mayors are, are, are very, very, very important. And when I was, was looking at the next stage of, of my career and trying to decide where do I go, how do I, what's the, what's the next step for me? And obviously I wanted to, to have as big an impact as possible. I, um, I sat down and I developed a, a Venn chart that, uh, or a Venn diagram that had eight characteristics of um, an ideal client for me. And this, this client, I felt that if I could help them thrive, then whatever they were doing would help as many people as possible. So the eight, the eight characteristics that I looked at and, 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 and designed or defined were these, elected to govern. So mayors focus on governing, not on the politicking that dominates upper tier governance and the run for re-election. The person had to be accessible. So mayors are much closer to the public than upper tier elected officials and connectable with the grassroots of the community. The person had to be influential. Mayors win earn and nurture increased influence and leverage it through building trust with the people, staff and council. But, and, and quite often on the show, we talk about mayors being the top dog. They had to be a leader. Mayors are the municipality's head coach volunteering to lead a complex organization responsible for safety, security, shelter, services and programs. And a little bit later in the episode, I'll, I'll show you another diagram that that I've, I've kind of illustrate all the different uh, realms within which a mayor has to be participating. Community care. Mayors are voted in by their neighbors, people who've experienced the mayor's care and generosity. They have to have a growth mindset. And I've discovered this firsthand, how important the growth mindset is. We have to be looking for answers, not for the problems. Mayors favor improvement over the ego-soothing status quo and embrace failure as a way of learning. Also being nonpartisan, mayors are not beholden to party politics and they lead according to their own credo and ethos and their vision. And lastly, proximity. Mayors live alongside their voters, seeing the local opportunities and challenges firsthand. So in short, once I decided and, or, or discovered that mayors were my ideal uh, person to work with, the ideal um, position that I wanted to work with, I said, well, how do I, how can I help them be the very best they can be? And there was three areas. And the first was to thrive. And Arianna Huffington in her book, Thrive, defines a third metric to thriving in addition to power and wealth as, as wisdom, wonder and well-being. So to thrive, um, we, we really have to take care of ourselves. We've got to be inquisitive, wondering and share our wisdom. And, and I, what I, what, one thing I think is so wonderful about how we begin many of our meetings and I begin the, the Thriving Mayor show is by honoring the people and the, the location, the land upon which I, I am, am broadcasting the show and, and um, thanking for that wonderful wisdom that they, the, our Indigenous people are sharing with us. The second area is to steward. And this comes from my ethos of being, uh, from being the landscape architect and for caring 
uh, being taught how to care. So the first level is really caring for ourselves. The second is caring for our community, caring for our families and our neighborhood, and lastly, caring for the earth. So if we each are, are looking at how we can um, implement our lives and, and move forward by being a steward, we really want to look at these three levels of, um, of how we can, we can um, care. And lastly, obviously, was to be a mayor. So in mayor, to, to be a mayor, we're, or mayors are constantly, they're, they're leading and they're growing through, through leading and then they're adapting to change. So these are, are three areas that that um, I, I think I could be really um, a, a, an interesting thinking partner for mayors to to both lead, to grow, and to adapt it uh, to situations. So it's time to meet a few of the thriving mayors who have been on the show. Uh, we're going to meet six of them. They're they're all um, really be wonderful people. Uh, great mayors. They they've demonstrating six of the leadership traits necessary for all leaders to to thrive. And those are trusting your growth mindset, leaning into self awareness, taking courageous action, inspiring others, pinpointing meaningful change, and crafting magnetic vision. A, a speech if you are you win and there'll have to be a speech that you want to give to people that if you were unsuccessful and that mm -hmm. uh, you know it puts a gave me a whole different perspective of being on a ballot and uh, having like I say watched numerous provincial and federal elections I went wow that's got to be the feeling those individuals go through and I put I tip my hat to anyone that puts their name on a ballot for an election because that is something that again what do you take for training and I was asked during the election so uh, what do you have for education to become a mayor and go well I've got these experiences and I've got this education but it wasn't deemed to go you don't go to mayor school until after you get elected mayor as I found out which uh, I was glad to be able to attend Merlin's market <laughs> yeah you got it and then uh, so it wasn't really how how it started for for the entrepreneurship and, and you know and, and for um, Guatemala, like, I mean, it, it's just beautiful, right? And then so uh, a lot of times we forget to actually explore where we live. We're, yeah. we're sort of like you know, just so used to being at home and that's it. So I, I used to hang around with my uncles and my cousins and they would be going on trips on different things. And I would just be like, you know, little kid just, hey, can I go with you? They probably wanted to say no, stay home, but, you know, they wouldn't. They would be like, yeah, sure, come on on. And, and so I started to really explore it. What I quickly realized is that it's just so amazing to meet different people. And, yeah. and, and that's, you know, we're all different, um, it, but at the same time, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, I really like to, to, to do that and explore that. And so that's, it, I love it. It's what, what makes my life even better as, as I progress. Yeah. And obviously you have a very strong spirit of serving of certain yeah. leadership as well, which is, is the best kind of leadership. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, no, to me, um, to me, I always, I always tell people that um, I don't feel as a leader. I, I don't want to be like, uh, I know that's what I, I end up being, but I want to be a, a tool for, for people that are not able, like, you know, they feel stuck. They feel like, you know, I want to be a tool for them to utilize, to, to, to be better. Yeah. Uh, I want to be a tool for, for development. I want, want to be a tool for progress, for, for, for well-being. Yeah. And just, just mentioning the sense of community and pride and, and family and togetherness and caring that, uh, that lights your eyes up and, and, yeah. uh, yeah, that's oh, yeah. so powerful. Yeah, yeah congratulations yeah. and and uh, kudos Thank to you. you, Merlin. That's that's really fantastic. And for young people that are are thinking about politics as well, I mean, this is this is so critical, especially yeah. during times of pandemic. And as we come out of the pandemic, and we're going to be rebuilding and rejuvenate, rejuvenating, and things are going to change. And and yeah. it, it personal care and and caring for each other is is so absolutely critical well-being uh, i i always i always said that you know if we and this is what i love about igloo like in, in inuit is that wealth is not monetary wealth wealth is well-being and, and 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 caring that was how it started 
the campaign was completely different, obviously, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, no door knocking, no big rallies, things like that. So we really had to get creative. Um, and it was awesome. It was really, really, I really thoroughly enjoyed the campaign process in terms of connecting with people. Yeah. Um, one thing that was, and I won't even, I won't sugarcoat this. I received a tremendous amount of criticism. Um, I somehow became the focus of um, a couple of the mayoral candidates' campaigns um, in a really negative way, yeah. a really, really negative way. And it was yeah. always talking about the fact that I'm, you know, how can she be a mayor if she's pregnant? Mm. How can she be a mayor if she's going to have a young child? Um, really, it was hard. And I won't lie. There were days that, you know, you question why the heck am I doing this? Why yeah. am I putting up with this scrutiny when I could be home nurturing this little child that's within me? Mm. But it actually just gave me more resolve to. Well, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking <laughs> with it and and persevering and, and having that faith and trust and tenacity and resilience. Well, I have an amazing amount of people who support me and yeah. just lift me up daily. So it, I couldn't have done it alone. Absolutely not. But and it, it still happens today, right? Like people are this is different. There is literally a tiny human being in the mayor's office right now. Yeah. That has never happened before. Uh, pack that along with the fact that I'm a 37 year old woman. This is something that's completely different. So congratulations. I, the way that I first um, found out about you two Fraser was through YouTube and, and you, you got some really fun videos on the, on the Moose Jaw YouTube channel, which I, I uh, asked people to go and uh, and check out and um the video that i was talking about um canada's most notorious city wanting to get away from it all is over fifteen thousand views now in two weeks so do you mind if i play that and then we'll have a little uh, chat about it sure okay. absolutely okay so uh i'll just go to this view here turn that off and here we go Are you a Canadian politician taking heat for going away at Christmas? Listen up. I'm Fraser Tolmy, mayor of Moose Jaw. And I'm notoriously lucky because I don't need to take the heat to get away from it all. Why? Thank you. Because we have it all right here in Canada's most notorious city. Mm. We have all the amenities and no shaming. Awesome. So, if you're someone trying to escape from it all, do what Al Capone did. Come to Canada's most notorious city. We'll never tell. Oh, that's so awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. That was lots of fun to do. A biggest strawberry ever, eh? I mean, I love your mindset. Uh, if they can do it, I can do it. And where do I have to go to make it happen? So moving from Edmonton to Belleville, um, that, that's that's really fantastic. So the entrepreneurial mindset, that, yeah, that's a, a beautiful growth mindset. How is that translating now into what you're doing, uh, your vision for Belleville and what you're doing kind of on your day-to-day uh, mayoral journey? Yeah, you know, personally, and I think I was sort of taught this by uh, Jim True Living, one of the founders of Boston Pizza. Uh, people know him from uh, Dragon's Den uh, mm. uh, a lot. But, you know, one of the things that was instilled upon me is that you cannot have a good business in a bad community, meaning wow. that if you want your business to survive and to thrive, you really need to uh, help uh, make your community as good as it can be. So that's always been my call to involvement, uh, whether it be with uh, organizations like the Chamber of Commerce or uh, through our donation program through the restaurant. Uh, I always felt that. And I think that as I tried to help and improve my community, it became a natural sort of path uh, mm-hmm. to uh, to get elected and to try to make some decisions that are better for us than the long term. Uh, selfishly, it's better for my business uh, in the long term as well. But at the same time, it's an opportunity to really make some positive changes. So um, I, uh, you know, I ran, I got elected, I got more familiar with the process. I saw 
uh, some things that I didn't think were we were approaching in the right direction. And it just was the next step for me to run for mayor. And uh, it has been uh, incredibly rewarding to be able to finally take some action on some issues that for decades and decades and decades had been uh, had had not uh, ha happened. That right. may have been because of a lack of political will or courage or just the community may not have been ready for it. But nonetheless, it's nice to see that progress. That's why I went into, uh, I get involved with organizations is to make a difference and yeah. to move it forward. I'm just curious about, you know, your process, what, you know, how, how, uh, how you work through that. It's super, it. it's super awesome. It's a great blog. That thank you. Yeah, that's it. and maybe when you uh, sh share the episode, you can share the link to that blog. I, I also think it's a, a good blog, um, not because <clears throat> I wrote it, because I think that these are ideas that cities need to embrace if we're going to really be kind of inclusive, prosperous, and uh, and ready for climate change. Quite frankly, uh, in in the twenty first century. So, yeah. um, I, your first question was a really interesting one. Is this are these just my ideas, or is this city policy, or is it somewhere in between? Um, I, I, the honest answer is it is somewhere in between. Um, one of the reasons I wrote this blog is to give our staff who are working on all of these issues some cover uh, when they bring really bold ideas to council because that's what we've asked them to do. It's basically it's socializing the public to these ideas so that when staff bring forward a report, for example, on missing middle housing, um, then people will be like, oh, right. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. I read about that. Just a sampling of some of the amazing mayors that I've been very fortunate to have as guests on the Thriving Mayor Show. The uh, the 30, 35, 40 minutes of each show are just are just so rewarding um, for me. And one of the reasons why I started the show was to was to get to know mayors better after having spent 30 years working with them kind of across the table. Uh, being the consultant in the room when they were obviously up at the uh, at the uh, head of the council chambers, but didn't really ever get the chance to to chat with them a lot about uh, their personal lives and and why they were doing what they were doing and and making the big difference that they're making in their communities. So it's uh, really wonderful. Now, obviously, uh, those are uh, six examples of, of mayors who are thriving, who are demonstrating these leadership traits, which are, are uh, super critical. But then there's there's the challenges as well. And, and um, obviously, with living in a pandemic, uh, things are changing. So we'll just flip over to that. <clears throat> Everything has and is changing. Although the mayor's the complexity of a mayor's job has not, it's well, it's definitely gotten more complex because of of uh, the issues that I'll, I'll show in a moment. But the mayor still has these eight themes or, or uh, portfolios that they've got to work within: the land, water, and nature, facilities and programming, infrastructure and equipment, safety, security, protection, values, financing, and vision planning and implementation listening and engagement and mindset and governance. So the, the right side of the of the Venn diagram are the kind of the physical aspects of running the city. And on the left side are the, the soft skills or, or um, really being the leader. So the, the right side typically is, is managed by the city management and the left side is, is uh, led by the vision and the leadership skills uh, of the mayor. Now layered on top of that, are those three areas where the mayor can be thriving. So that's that's with their, themselves taking, um, thriving uh, on their own, being being the very best mayor they could be, and then stewarding, stewarding, care for themselves, caring for their uh, constituents, their neighborhood, and then care for the planet. As well as they still have all of their leadership traits that they're expected to be demonstrating that everything has and is changing. And this, this is some of the feedback that I'm getting from um, some of the mayors I'm talking to, some people in, in uh, staff, some of the research that I'm doing, that uh, the, jobs are, the job is becoming more isolated, more lonely, there's more scrutiny, uh, especially by uh, the, the media and the media and all the different forms that it takes now, which could be one person blogging there's uh, more restrictions. We that was one of the uh, the um, 
areas that uh, Mayor, Mayor told me was poking a little bit of fun at uh, over the Christmas holidays for travel. Uh, there's more work, there's more worry, there's more stress, there's more dot, dot, dot. And there's less collaboration. And, and a major, major element and aspect of a mayor's uh, day and success is collaborating collaborating with the people, the council, the staff, and obviously with their, their residents. There's less feedback. So it's it's hard to to test ideas uh, that you might have because there's we just don't have that those forms that are open to us uh, anymore. There's some digital uh, forms, but others are are uh, are definitely been diminished. There's less freedom, less balance, less growth, less sleep, and less energy, less dot dot dot. So with everything changing, there's also uh, the other side of the coin. There's the flip side, there's the creating new opportunities. And this goes back to, to, to being a, a mayor, to the three elements of being a mayor, which is leading, growing and adapting. So that there's new opportunities to help lead better, to help grow more efficiently and help to adapt more effectively. And that's where I'd like to suggest that I can help with the thriving mayor. So there's really two areas that I'd like to offer my help with. The first is to help mayors build their community. The second is to help mayors build and enhance their leadership. And we can go to www.thrivingmayor.com to learn more on, on the general uh, approach that I'm taking. The first part is building community and the, the service that I've developed is called Skill Academy, which is a mayor's mastermind. And that could be accessed at www.thrivingmayor.com forward slash skill dash academy. And Skill Academy has two basic parts to it. It's an online mastermind strictly uh, reserved for mayors. The first part is personalized learning, and the second part is group collaboration. And the key is that both parts are results driven, and they're 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 designed to be very 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 fast, so quickly generating actions. And part one is mayors can join Skill Academy and progress along their own pace using a, a really great resource called Read It For Me. So in Skill Academy, in, in part one, uh, each, each mayor is given their own dashboard where there's, there's uh, over 100 different skills in leadership, uh, self-development, and um, designing your own legacy that, uh, that we, we teach um, once a week, every, every week of the year. And these, these uh, sessions are, are basically broken down into 10-minute little chunks that, uh, that we could use to learn with. Over the past few years, coaching has risen tremendously in popularity. And for good reason, it works, if it's done correctly. In a 2006 Blessing White study, 73% of managers admitted to having some form of coaching training. However, only 23% of them thought that the coaching had an impact on their performance or job satisfaction. Why didn't it work? Probably for three reasons. One, the coaching was probably overly theoretical, too boring or complicated. Even if it was engaging. And part two of, of uh, the mastermind is the community part of it. And this is where we uh, come into uh, a weekly call. And on the call, there's there's this 10 or 15 minutes set aside for the coaching, which is on the skill. But then we, we can break into... Um, uh, designing our action, that's, that's something that we, we need to tackle at that, that particular day. We come up with an action item and then we, we get into a small breakout room, breakout group on Zoom with other, ma uh, other mayors and we collaborate. And we help each other design the very best actions to overcome the obstacle or achieve the goal or tackle a brand new opportunity that, uh, that's ahead of us. So it's a very, very powerful platform to, uh, to um, help mayors thrive and to help mayors build their network. 
I personally use uh, or, or, or participate in an action class, which is exactly the same as a skill class, every Saturday morning with a group of entrepreneurs at 10, from 10 to 11, and, and find that it's one of the most powerful hours of the week and, uh, and developing roots of really great friendships. So there's, there's the personalized dashboard to track growth and target areas, the read it for me library, which is both audio, but you can read it, you can uh, watch it and you can listen to it. They're the, the leading uh, personal development and business marketing books um, that are out. There's, there's a new book done every week, uh, guidance from, from myself and engagement with the mastermind. So what is, how does this help? It helps tailor learning and growth exactly as you want it. Uh, you can share the burning questions, issues, and opportunities with other mayors or, or with me, get targeted advice on how to address specific challenges, practice and test to build skills and new competencies, design your living and lasting legacy, and thrive loving your life and leaving, leading your community and serving humanity. And the second area that, uh, that has been I've developed is what I call the coaching way. And this is leadership development, but it's it's leadership development like no other. And again, it's the blend of what I've learned and am learning in, in being a coach and being a coach educator uh, and being a professional and a consultant and a mentor. And, and I'll explain how uh, I like to bring all, all of those four different aspects of my unique skill set to, uh, to helping coaches. And the coaching way can be found at the www.thrivingmayor.com forward slash coaching. These are a couple of the screen captures from the page. And to me, um, when I think about mayoring and when I, I draw the analogy with sport, because I'm a, a high performance sports coach as well, I think of mayoring as the Olympic Games of politics. And I wonder, as, as uh, a mayor participating in the, in the Olympic Games, do you have a coach in your corner? And if not, and if you want one, uh, here I am. And I, I, I think of mayoring as the Olympic Games of politics because of the eight factors that we, we talked about at the beginning of the episode, that, that mayoring is the most um, challenging and, and the most visible and the most accessible Pol uh, political role that a politician could potentially have, but it's also the most important, the most influential. So I like to look at your mayor mayoral term like a four, the four quarters of a game that, that we're planning out. We, we've got a game plan and, you know, we're going to adapt to it on the fly. And the first quarter, we're, we're setting you up for success. The second is establishing your rhythm to transform your leadership, ignite your team. The third is being the difference maker and creating lasting change. And the fourth is designing your legacy and mastering your new skills for whatever you decide is going to be next. Is it another term of being a mayor? Is it moving on to a provincial, a state, federal level of government or to becoming an entrepreneur, going back to the business you were before, uh, et cetera? So we like to ask, what quarter are you in? And the quarters, unlike a game, are not sequential. They're not one after another. We, we can look at them as, as the whole four years of your term. So mayors lead the most influential teams in our society. And it always surprises me that the, these most influential teams, our cities and towns, our provincial governments, our state governments, our federal governments, our teams of politicians that work together and are supposed to have our best interest at heart and they don't they don't have a coach so that's why uh, uh, the leader has to be so strong and when that leader is not strong and that leader is um, has potentially problematic uh, people within the team like we see at the federal level and the provincial level and very hardly ever at the municipal level but it, but it has happened um, that that the uh, the leader has to take charge. Leader has to be able to lead uh, in a way that's that's authentic with themselves and powerful. So leading, and that's why I've come up with the coaching way for mayors. 
um, that that it's a, I think is a really uh, innovative and and powerful way to lead your teams. And like a sport, the the mayor, mayoral journey, the mayorship journey follows a, a pattern of milestones, and, and we'll talk about those in a second. But if we, those aren't defined, then we we may lose the opportunity to tweak the game plan and strengthen your tactics and your strategy. So it's really important to have that roadmap, to have that philosophy, that vision, and the roadmap that that sets out where where you want to be each each uh, milestone along the way of your term. So and as a coach, I'll help you craft that plan uh, so that you're you're designing to inspire, excite, educate, and empower your leadership along your journey. The um, the other interesting part about um, the coaching way is that I don't work with you just as a coach. I work with you as a mentor and a trainer to help you become a coach and then to employ coaching as a style of your leadership. And we know that there's six basic styles of leadership of which coaching is one. And servant leadership and coaching leadership are, are the two most um, effective ways of leading that, uh, that we'll work on. So the Coaching Way program is, is designed in the, uh, the blue mind map with the Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 is designed to uh, identify different skills or, or traits or milestones along, along the, uh, or within that, that mayoral term that you, you may want to consider. They're, they're not mandatory. They're, it, it's great to be thinking about them all and, and thinking about them one at a time to define how best they match uh, each mayor's pr particular um, skills and um, interests and priorities. But overlying or underlying all of the work that the mayor does is their inner and outer game which I call the Bemeri, B-E-M-E-R-I. So the inner game is consisting of your body, your emotions, and your mindset. And we, we need to ensure that all three of those inner game um, areas are considered and are being cared for and taken care of and nurtured. And the outer game are things that we have much less control on, but we, we do have some control and, again, need to be... Um, working towards optimizing those and then balancing them. And those are your environment, your relationships, and your ideas. So within, within the, the Coaching Way program, we can see that um, we, we, can, we set up and we can start at, at Q1, which is setting you up for success. And, and the very first uh, uh, button there is crafting your vision. And the second is defining and publicizing your philosophy. Now, when, when you go to visit the Skill Academy page and on thrivingmayor.com, there's a free handout that helps to, to work through the, uh, to, the, the development and uh, refinement of a mayor's philosophy, which are, uh, are, are really interesting little tools to use. The moving over from Q1 to Q2 is establishing your rhythm, so identifying opportunities for growth, building team chemistry, coaching your team. So these are things that, that typically leaders are, are faced with, and their leaders, leadership competencies that, that some leaders are, are very good at and other leaders are looking for some help with. And, and moving through the coaching program, with me, we'll, we can identify which of these areas uh, we want to work on. Q3 is called being the difference maker. And this is really what um, being a mayor is, is how a mayor can be remembered, is what was the difference that you made in your community for your residents uh, at City Hall, um, for the people that you work with? So it's, it's all of the, uh, the things, expanding your influence, leading effective change, pouring energy into your vision, celebrating your municipality. And Q4 is really about what's next. So if you're going to stay being the mayor, then we want to make sure that we're enrolling 
more visionaries. And that goes back right back to Q1 to establishing and crafting that vision and putting in place the tools that um, like uh, like Mayor helps with her blog and, and her uh, visionary um, approach to making sure that the people that are coming up um, with you are, are going to be, be able to carry on your vision. And if you move away, that's even more, more important and move on to, to uh, your next role. And sharing your wisdom, wisdom, uh, focusing on transformations and mastering your next, next skill set. And this is where Skill Academy Mastermind is so interesting that um, I think just investing in that um, for your own personal interest and um, introduction to these cutting edge new approaches to leadership and business development and entrepreneurship and communication um, to conflict management, team building, uh, things like that are, are so, so very, very powerful. So the Coaching Way program is uh, basically I become your thinking partner and and help you to um, look at old old belief systems, old stories that you tell yourself, um, you know where where you might have some blocks and and really start to help you look at uh, at things in a very, very different way. Not to give any answers, of course, but to but to help help you think through. Um, and, and come up with, with new perspectives. The, the program includes two one-hour private coaching sessions with me every month, a personalized experience log to track your growth, gamify your journey, and share your experiences, which is a super valuable document that I update after every single session with, uh, with a summary and usually one or two new either exercises or resources or points of view um, to, to help you reframe what you're looking at. Uh, access to the Read It For Me online library of over 250 books. And as I said, it's growing every week. Anytime access to me via text or email when you want to bounce around a new idea. Uh, and you can count on me bringing my consulting, coaching, and mentoring skills to help you in every situation. So that's where I think I'm different than other coaches, leadership coaches, is that having been in the city building business for over 30 years, the, the town building, the communication, the public realm, uh, public consultation uh, realm for, for over 30 years, um, I, I think that there's, there's a, a, a very valuable uh, resource there to help, again, um, with your thinking. So working with me will help you to communicate your magnetic vision, to build momentum, to transform your leadership and ignite your team, pour energy into your vision, adapt and employ your unique leadership styles, such as your a coaching style, or we mentioned the stewardship style of, of leadership, plan and equip yourself for your next adventure, or which could be life after being mayor, to design your living and lasting legacy, and to thrive, loving your life, leading your community, and serving humanity. So I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity to have been working with uh, some amazing, or, or you know, talking to some. I haven't really been working yet, but talking to some amazing mayors on the uh, on the Thriving Mayor Show, and and love to uh, chat about these opportunities and how I can help uh, each and every mayor thrive. So that's both at uh, Skill Academy and, uh, and at the coaching. The, uh, that's the end of the formal presentation. The uh, wonderful opportunity that, uh, that I, I have in speaking with mayors. And um, this is a learning journey for me as well. And I'm, I'm, I don't look at this as work. I look at this as, as uh, a joy and uh, uh, just every, every day that, uh, that I wake up, it's, it's a new journey for me and, and, uh, and love to, uh, to help. So the, the, my call to action 
uh, for for my mayors is to reach out to call me uh, or email me at mikeh at thrivingmayor.com or visit www.thrivingmayor.com. And uh, we'll see you next week. Hope everyone has an awesome Earth Day tomorrow. Thank you for joining the Thriving Mayor Show. Make sure to like and share and tell your friends and colleagues. Mayors are awesome and are the change agents to enhance the quality of living for over 80% of us. Remember what Coach Wooden said, you cannot live a perfect day without doing something for someone who can never repay you. Much love and peace. Until next time.